Everybody thinks saying no is about confidence. Just be assertive, stand your ground. It's not. It really is not. Your brain is literally creating physical pain when you try to refuse someone. And I'm going to show you exactly why. So today we're exposing why your brain sabotages your ability to say no. I'll show you the mirror neuron system that makes you feel their disappointment before it happens. And why your brain treats rejection like physical death. And there's this three word hack that actually bypasses your brain's panic response? Plus why the most successful people feel this just as much as you do. Let's dive in. Hey, I'm Gregory, founder of The Brain Academy. So recently one of my students told me, Gregory, my coworker asked me to cover their shift. I'm thinking, no, like screaming it inside, but sure, no problem, comes out of my mouth every single time. So what's wrong with me? No, nothing is wrong with you. See your brain? Well, it's running three separate systems that completely hijack your ability to say no. And the third one, when you hear this, everything's going to make sense. So in the 1990s, Italian neuroscientists at the University of Parma are studying monkeys grabbing peanuts. Boring Tuesday afternoon stuff, right? But then completely by accident, they discover something that changes everything. You see the exact same neurons fire when a monkey grabs a peanut and when it just watches another monkey grab a peanut. These are called mirror neurons. We literally feel what others feel. No choice, it, it just happens. Think about it, someone smiles, you smile back, right? You don't decide to, it's automatic. Mirror neurons are real documented cells that make us unconsciously mimic others. Now, when you're about to say no to someone, these mirror neurons are already running a simulation of how that person will feel. You're feeling their future disappointment right now before you've even opened your mouth. So the insula, that's the part of your brain that processes emotion, well, it's going crazy, making you experience their disappointment as if it's already happening. You're emotionally time traveling and you can't turn it off. But wait, it gets worse. Oh, but Gregory, maybe I'm just too empathetic. Yeah, well, here's the thing about emotional contagion. We automatically sync up with other people's emotion. It's like catching a cold, but for feelings. And if you're highly empathetic, which let's be honest, if you can't say no, you definitely are. Well, your amygdala, the, the fear and emotion center, has created this super highway for emotional contagion. You're not just anticipating their disappointment, you're feeling it before it actually happens. Now here's what's interesting. Highly successful people often score just as high on empathy measures as people who can't say no. So what's the difference? Well, they figured something out about the third system. When you hear this, you're going to think, why didn't anyone tell me this before? So this is going to sound completely made up, but stay with me. Your brain literally cannot tell the difference between social rejection and physical pain. Same brain regions light up. The interior cingulate cortex, the right ventral prefrontal cortex. So Dr. Matthew Lieberman at UCLA showed that social rejection activates the brain's pain matrix. In his studies, he found that acetaminophen can reduce the pain of social rejection. Though I'm not saying to pop painkillers, that's not the solution. <laughs> but that's how physical this response is. But why? Well, think back 50,000 years ago. Small tribes, if the tribe rejected you, you were dead. Not metaphorically, actually dead. I mean, eaten by predators, no, there's no survival outside the group. So our brain evolved to treat saying no like a survival threat. And here's what's crazy. Your brain hasn't gotten the memo that it's 2025. It's still running software from when getting excluded meant becoming a saber-toothed tiger's lunch. So your brain has this autopilot mode that runs about 95% of your daily life. And this autopilot is all about one thing, avoiding danger. Not even being in danger, just avoiding the possibility of maybe facing perceived danger. So here's a technique that actually works. Yes and no. I know, it sounds weird, but this is brilliant. You say, yes, I value whatever matters to them. And then, no, I can't do the thing that they're asking. Yes, I value our friendship and no, I can't help you move this weekend. Your brain hears yes first and the pain response calms down. The and, never but, always and, saying and prevents the emotional contagion from overwhelming you. You're not rejecting the person, you're affirming the relationship while declining the specific request. So this technique works because it tells your ancient brain, everything's okay, we're still connected. This person still matters to me. But this specific thing isn't happening. But here's what most people mess up. You can't just wing this. Your brain needs to build these pathways when you're calm, not when someone's staring at you waiting for an answer. That's like trying to learn to swim while drowning. Write down three requests you always cave on. Create your yes and no response and then, and this is crucial, say them out loud when you're alone. Yeah, you'll feel ridiculous, I know, but do it anyway. First rule of neuroplasticity, we become better at what we repeat and focus on. Well, right now, 
You're really good at saying yes when you mean no. We need to make you good at this new pattern instead. So what's your kryptonite? When do you say yes when you actually wanted to say no? Is it family guilt, work requests, that friend who always needs help? Drop a comment below. I'm curious which situation gets you the most. Now, if you want to dive deep into rewiring these obsolete responses and actually building boundaries that stick, we cover this extensively in the Brain Coach program at brainacademy.com. Brain out. Sharpen.